Honest question, how are people affording this stuff? I look at the Deer 333G and it's selling for nearly 100K. Some of the other tractors are priced like a brand new car with attachments priced at nearly 5 or 10K. Adding a potential property cost of 50 to 200K with a national income average at 30 to 50K, I'm completely lost on how people afford stuff like this. I'll also add that I'm in a very good profession with high pay and even still, all of this seems expensive. That is a comment from one of our better performing videos um, on which would you choose. You know, there's a bunch of different pieces of equipment for managing a property and an excavator, a skid steer, a few different sized tractors and kind of going through the process of selecting the right one for you. It's a big decision to make. And a lot of folks, that, that, that video's got a lot, of, a lot of comments on it, will say, I can't afford that, I'll never afford that, or something along those lines. And so this comment stood out to me because he asked, how can you afford it? And I think that that right there in and of itself is a different perception or perspective. And saying that you can't do something, I like to use that terminology when I don't wanna do it, right? I can't do this, no, I can't help out, I, I don't have time, whatever it is, right? If you are asking how you can make something happen, then that window is open, that door is open to find a way to get it done. And so for me, I recognize I'm in a unique situation. I am a tractor attachment dealer. I buy and sell used equipment as well. And so I have a, you know, a, a bit of an advantage as far as that goes. And so when you see all these videos out here, I do it to sell the stuff that I'm selling to showcase it features, show it how it's used and everything else and, and use it as marketing, you know, but I also am actually living and, and doing this stuff as well. So, you know, that is something that I have navigated my way through over the years and got to this point, right? It was me asking that same question a long time ago, just like this gentleman, how can I make this happen? I want this equipment, this is, where, this is my plan, this is where I wanna go, how can I get there? And so I started out with nothing, right? And I built this whole thing up and it took a lot of years and I'm still working on it, still trying to get to the next level of where I wanna be at. And so I wanna give you some insights on different ways that you can help offset those costs or justify those equipment purchases or justify the property, how you can minimize the expense and make it work to your advantage. All right, so I jotted down some notes on different ways that you can do it. And I've, I've used some of these methods and others I haven't used, but I think it's worth mentioning that you know, whether you're, you're college educated or not, you are going to learn some lessons. They're gonna cost you some money and time as well. And so I've gone through, well, college, but then I've also gone through a lot more of those life lessons where I've, I've made mistakes, right? I've, man, wish I could take something back and, and do something else. But if you learn from those mistakes, they are gonna cost you money just like a college course would, but you'll have a lesson there. You'll be smarter. You'll know what to do the next time and you gotta have confidence in yourself, right? If, if you've gotten this far in life, then you know how to get back up on your feet. You've been knocked down before, and, and me, I'm generally, I'm okay taking risks, right? And the more that I have taken risks, the less risky they are. You know, I'm more comfortable, I know um, the big things to look out for and can manage those a lot better, and that just comes with practice. So it's a big deal to buy 10, 20, 30, 40 acres, it's a big deal to buy a $50,000 tractor. And it helps sometimes if you start out smaller, right? And build up to those bigger purchases where if you make a mistake, it's not as critical as making a hundred or 200 or $500,000 mistake. All right, so first thing about buying equipment, all right? It's very tempting to buy 0% new equipment and going through the pandemic, especially when used prices were the same as sometimes more, than new pricing, it made no sense to buy used, really. I mean, unless you couldn't get it new because inventory was depleted. That was the exception to the rule. But in a normal market, kind of like what we're getting back to now, you're gonna have that pretty big gap between new and used. And while new is still 0% and used is going to come with a higher interest rate, if you're financing, all it is is a game of math, right? It's just a game of numbers, see what the total cost is gonna be for you. But if you're paying cash for something and you can find a piece of equipment, especially after the pandemic when everybody was buying equipment, right? And things are starting to hit the market where they just don't need it anymore, or they thought they wanted it and they don't, they don't have a purpose for it now, you can buy something with super low hours on it and maybe get 10, 20, 30% off of the brand new pricing and you're gonna come out way ahead right there. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden, 
We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Another way you can save buying equipment is gonna be going with another brand besides the big ones. And this is kind of hit or miss. You got to do more research potentially, make sure you have a good dealer, good support. But you know, in the tractor world, we've been showing Summit a lot. I think that's a really good value. They're not a brand new company. Um, ITL manufactures them um, in, a, in a similar fashion under the Solus brand over in Europe. And then there's some modifications to the Summit line that are here in the States, but they're an existing platform, been around for a long time. So they have a lot of stability. Uh, engineering support behind them. Yanmar, 30% owns that company. So a lot of good things there. Coyote is another great brand that you can buy for significantly less than Kubota. You'll be amazed at some of the lift capacity, some of the other specs that you can get on brands like Coyote or Summit, um, TYM, that will outlift similar sized Kubota or John Deere tractors. They're not gonna be, maybe the fit and finish isn't quite on the same level, but they're still plenty good to get the actual work done that you want to do and you can save a lot of money doing so now buying land okay let's talk about that a little bit too because if you want a machine you probably want land too right and so something that uh, I've got a buddy who buys and sells and, and is in rentals and everything else a lot and some of my favorite stories from him are when he's bought a big parcel and then subdivided it out and you could do the same thing right where you could buy a bigger parcel of land section off a chunk of it or multiple chunks and sell those off and then keep the primary chunk that you want for yourself. And while it ends up being smaller, when you sell smaller pieces of land in little parcels, you can typically get a higher price per acre. And so you're gonna offset some of those costs to make your overall investment a lot cheaper. And so it takes more work, right? It takes more research trying to find a property that you can do that with. A lot of timing has to come together. You gotta know what you're looking at and what you're doing but it's a good way to minimize that investment on your land. Okay, so you've got the machine. Now what do you do, right? You bought the machine to get work done and that work should be saving you money from hiring out other companies to come in and do work for you. So there should be a savings associated with that. Yes, the machine costs you, the fuel costs you, the insurance costs you, everything else, but there's a trade-off there. And so overall, your labor is technically free, right? There should be a, a cost associated with your time too, but that's where you can start to see savings. And so you can put that justification on paper, right? The pros and the cons list of hiring these services out versus what you can do it for and see what kind of quick payback you're gonna get on that. And it's always important to remember that at the end of the day, even if it's 10, 20, 30 years down the road, unless your machine caught fire and burned down, there's value there, right? It doesn't go to zero. You buy a tractor and when you're done with it, it's not just zero dollars left. I mean, I've had this tractor for three or four years. I think I could probably sell it for more now than what I paid for it three or four years ago. So tractors tend to hold their value very well. Uh, in particular, when you're comparing that against cars or boats or something along those lines that drop pretty good, tractors are a different animal. So again, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of things being thrown around and you gotta go through it and write it all down and see what your total investment is at the end of the day when you're all done, right? When you have that property paid off, when you have that tractor paid off, when you're sitting there 30 years from now and inflation and appreciation and depreciation and all that stuff has come into play, how are you sitting? Now, the other side of that, a lot of folks do, and you get some, some flack for, for doing this as well, is renting out your services, hiring out your services. Go brush hog fields, go rototill, go do grapple work, go grade driveways, do the things that you're good at. Put that, post that stuff online in your local area on Facebook Marketplace. You know, if you can schedule one Saturday a month or, you know, an evening a week or however you want to set it up where you can go out and make a few hundred bucks here and there, that's going to add up quickly and help offset the cost of ownership significantly. And again, we're not going to get into all the details, but you do want to have the proper insurance and and there's just liability things that you want to be aware of there too, but that is a really good way, especially if you enjoy being on your tractor. And if you go into it with a game plan like that, where you're set up to recuperate some of these costs and minimize your outlay, that makes a big difference. All right, so that's for the machines, but now let's talk about the property. And if you haven't bought your property yet, there's some things to consider that could 
make the property more valuable or help minimize the cost of owning that property, including something that we're doing this fall. I actually just reached out to, uh, to our logger here just last week. I'm having my property, my other property that I own, logged off and we talked about that last winter i did contact some other folks didn't get anywhere with them i, I don't you know, it's just the day and age we live in so i'm going with that original quote good bad or indifferent it's going to be cash money in my pocket a good chunk of change that's going to help offset the cost of my land it's not clear cutting it it's just doing a select cut um, a couple hundred trees i can't remember exactly what it is and then if i still own the property in however many years we'll do the same thing again and repeat the process 30 some thousand dollars is gonna be coming back to me and yep, they will make a mess, but you know what, for deer hunting, which is what I'm doing a lot of with that property out there, besides nothing else, I'm not doing anything else with it, that's gonna make great habitat, it's gonna open up the canopy, get a lot of uh, seeds to germinate and grow up and, and just change the habitat out there too. And so I don't mind that at all, it doesn't bother me one bit. But that's a really great way to go into a property is talking with a forester, talking with loggers and, and getting an idea of what kind of timber value do we have here that's just sitting there doing nothing that we could we could recoup some cost on now something we do have out there is about 20 maybe a little bit over 20 acres of open fields that used to be before we owned it uh, farmed they were they were leased out or rented out to a farmer who planted those and I have considered doing that I have not pulled the trigger and um, you know rental rates are going to vary depending on the area of the country and I don't think you're going to be um, getting a significant amount for rental but you know they say you can cover your taxes and that kind of thing you hear so every little bit can add up right and if that's just a recurring easy revenue stream you have no other plan for the open areas or no other better way to grow your own crops and produce more income then that's an easy way to get some extra income now since we've moved to our our new place here i really don't get out to our other property very often um, it's a decent ways away and i'm just having a lot of fun here and it's keeping me busy and so something I, again, have considered I haven't pulled the trigger on is doing a hunting lease, right? And, and there's strong opinions on that either way, right? There's liability that's involved with folks bringing guns onto your land and if there was an accident of some kind. Um, but there are lease agreements that can get written up and, and those kinds of objections are able to be overcome if you want to. So that's, that's not something to prevent you from doing it. It just needs to be done in the right way if you want to proceed down there. But, you know, guys will rent their their land out or their hunting lease out for the entire year, just for a season, you know, spring and fall, depends on what you wanna do. So um, you have a lot of flexibility there and creativity there and land is getting harder to find. And so hunting lease demand is going up. And the last thing I got for you are gonna be like co-op programs where you can work with um, like Pheasants Forever or uh, wetland programs, Ducks Unlimited, all that kind of thing. And you can get put into these programs to keep your land unchanged or even improve it for uh, wildlife in, in certain ways and you can get paid to do so. And again, this isn't a lot, right? It's not, a, it's not gonna be a game changer, like, wow, I can buy this piece of land, have it all paid for by this program. But if you can start to add up some of these different ways on different parts of your property to, to put it all together and create revenue to offset the cost, well, then it does make a difference, right? And it could potentially increase your buying power on, on what you would want to buy that way or get everything paid off that much quicker or just make the dream happen now instead of 10 years in the future. So really, that's, that's what I got for you guys today. And, you know, this comes from me wanting to, not to brag about anything, not at all, but I have been at the point of starting out not knowing what to do and wanting somebody that has done it to kind of just lay it out there right and so these are things that you can do that just a normal a normal dude like me has done and made happen and it takes a lot of blood sweat and tears so to speak you know and it takes a lot of um well it takes risk right to, to get it done and you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes just the same way that i have and i still make mistakes on different purchases and decisions that i do but you can get it done i mean that's kind of if you're watching this channel it's everybody wants their, their, you know, their back 40, right? And so it's just something that you can get and can be attainable. And just because you can't find a way right now or you don't know where to get started doesn't mean it can't happen for you. I'd encourage you to change your mindset. Don't say, I can't afford that or I'll never be able to get that. Say, how can I get that? And then start figuring out your plan on how you can do that. And that could be picking up an extra few shifts. That could be cutting some bad habits out to save some money and put in a separate savings account. It could be just budgeting things differently but you gotta prioritize it if you want it. And the folks that do want it normally can find a way 
you know, maybe it's one year, maybe it's five years, maybe it's 10 years, but they can find a way to get there and accomplish their goals. No doubt about it. I am, I'm a blessed man. I, you know, thank the Lord for that every day. You know, that's just, I mean, I have no, there's no reason I have the life that I do and, and somebody else doesn't, but I recognize that and I want to pass along what I can to try to help others out. And so that's me doing that today. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, if you do own a tractor though, well, we sell tractor attachments and we'd love to earn your business. We ship them nationwide. So you can go on over to goodworkstractors.com and see what we have to offer. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Bye.